this morning with a praise from Miss Jo, who, um, when she heard that we were going to be talking about Psalm 150, she said, I wrote a song from that. So she's going to share that, and the band's going to join her that, with, with that this morning. Well, this is not a sitting down song. This is a dancing song. <laughs> Psalm 150 says, praise you the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. I'm not really cutting in on the sermon because you'll have to hear it again by the time Pastor Kathy comes forward. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. And then it goes on and on in the temple with David uh, having originated with all the temple worship. Uh, praise him with all these instruments and praise him uh, and sing with a dance. And so I want each of you just to maybe a little strange at first, but maybe you'll catch on and um, just praise him, praise him, praise him with your voice and vocalists, singers call this their instrument. So you have an instrument. So and you have you have whatever you and Jesus are feeling this morning to praise him, uh, help yourself. It's all okay as long as it's Jesus, okay? Amen. everyone. Uh, I am Pastor Elizabeth Ann, and usually this is when I welcome you all to our church, but you have already been so wonderfully welcomed, and we've spent such a great time already in praise, and so I'd like to use this time to um, share my praises with you. As many of you know, uh, my husband Keaton works in the music production touring industry, and in March got a call that that was no more. Um, and as that continued, we heard that it would be no more for the year, and we still haven't heard if it'll be happening next year. Um, we spent a lot of nights in prayer and in tears 
a lot of days in anger, frustration. We have found many different people to blame along the way, which is not the nice Christian thing to do. And just spent so much time wondering what was happening, when our prayers would be answered, when things would be fixed, when they would get back to normal. But God acts in God's own way. God's not afraid of what's going on, even if we are. And through this season, God has given us small moments of hope and happiness, small moments of praise. We get to spend, Keaton and I get to spend our mornings together drinking coffee and reading our Bibles. We've never had time to do that before. We get to spend more time with our family. I was celebrated here um, for my graduation from seminary, which I didn't get to attend. And that was more special than anything I think I could have flown to go to. We've gotten to know our neighbors whose names we didn't even know that lived across the street from us that are our best friends now. And so through these small moments, God has shown us that God is here. And this is what I wrote about it that I really wanted to share with you. Everything we wanted back or fixed hasn't been given back to us or restored. We still have hard days and nights, questions and frustrations, fears and worries. But we also still have God, who has not changed, who is not worried. We have the hope that Christians and believers who came before us have gone through crazy hard times and are, have been okay. So today I praise God for being God, for being here, for not being afraid, and for the little moments that has shown me God is still here. Amen. All right, let's worship some more. Let's stand if you can. Right. 
All right, this next song is a new song. And there's lots of times we, we sing about shouting to the Lord. But this song is going to give you the opportunity to do it. So if you feel moved, go for it. Just go for it. Thank you. 
praise you in the evening, praise you when I'm young and when I'm old, praise you when I'm laughing, praise you when I'm grieving, praise you every season of the soul. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely. He loves us so much. He wants us to know that. There's a lot of evil around us in the world, but he's calling us back to praise him. I thank you, God. I thank you for your love and your power and your awesomeness toward us. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Move 
God, for the provision you have for us in the low times and a new job. Lift up your head. put me in the water. Thank you, God, to save my life, and amen. Yes, we, we thank God that he saved your life.
dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, the weak made strong in the Savior's love. Father God, we come to you this morning, Lord, and we just want to fill this house full of your praise. We just want to lift you up and glorify you this morning. We want to let you know how thankful we are, how much we, we just appreciate your presence, just knowing that I don't have to look for you. You're, you're there always. All I have to do is have a thought or speak it, or feel it, and know that you are there. I just praise you, God, this morning for that. And i just thankful for all the praises that are going to be lifted up in your house this morning, God. Go with us this week and let us continue our praise week this morning, Lord. We just love you, and it's in your son's most precious name. All God's children said... was awesome. Did you hear Alan's praise? He got a job? Yeah. <laughs> We've been praising God a lot this week, but you know what? We were praising him before too. Yeah. Today is definitely a special day. And as we conclude our time in Psalms, my hope is that this whole study has brought us to a place of praise. That remembering who God is and what he has done naturally leads us to a place where we can't help but celebrate him. In Psalm 1, do you remember Psalm 1 when we started this series? We read, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers, but they delight in the law of the Lord meditating on it day and night. And that's how the book of Psalms begins, with this promise for those who walk in the ways of the Lord, that joy comes to those who are obedient to God and his ways. And we've seen a lot of those ways as we've journeyed through the book of Psalms. We've seen different ways for us to be dedicated to him and to follow him. And it's not always a happy, happy, joy, joy thing, right? There are certainly times and seasons of lament and of distress. And we found instructions on what to do when life is not so great and when God does not feel so close. The common thread that we've seen through all of these psalms is that God is good. Regardless of how life is on this earth, God is good. Regardless of what you're going through at the moment, God is good. Regardless of the pain that you feel or the stress that you endure or even the persecution that you fall prey to, God is good. And we've seen that over and over again in Psalms. 
So I think then it's very fitting that the 150th Psalm, the very last one, concludes this. And, and what this Psalm is, it's called a Hallelujah Psalm. And I don't know if, if maybe you knew this already, that the word hallelujah is actually the combination of two words the first in Hebrew, the first of which is hallelujah, which means praise, and then yah, which is short for Yahweh, praise God. And so when we say hallelujah, what we are saying is praise God, praise the Lord. And that word praise means to boast or to express appreciation for someone or something. And so this hallelujah praise, this very last one, is a call to all God's creation to praise him. To use the instruments that you have, whether it's a keyboard or a guitar or your voice, to praise him. Here's what it says. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his, might, in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with a blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and with dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of the cymbals. Praise him with loud, clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the ending to our psalm book. It is a hymn. And in so being a hymn, it is a song that focuses entirely on the object of our faith and devotion, which is God. This is not a song we sing about us and how we feel. This is a song about God and who he is because we remember that God is good. And truth be told, I think this is the goal of our salvation. Obedience, like we read about in Psalm 1, is not the goal of our relationship with God it is rather the means through which our relationship with God grows and becomes strong. And as we walk in obedience to him and his ways, as we do what the psalmist said in Psalm 1, then we find that we come to know God better. We walk with him more. We enter into life deeper with him. And as we do that, the natural response for us is praise. Isn't that amazing? That the goal of our faith and salvation is to bring God glory. And when our relationship with him grows strong, praise is a natural result. So I thought we'd look for just a couple of minutes at why it is that we should praise him, okay? Why should we use our instruments and our voices to praise him out loud? Well, the first reason then is because we were made for it. In Isaiah 43, God has gathered all his people and he says to them, For I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. And Jesus, when he entered the town of Jerusalem and people were shouting hallelujah and laying down palm branches and someone said, they shouldn't be praising you. And he said, if they don't praise me, the rocks will cry out. You see, we were made to praise him and bring glory to him. That's why he designed you. The second reason that we praise him is that it brings us joy. And it lifts us out of despair. And we've seen that in other psalms, haven't we? That when we feel like we're in the pit and we can't get out, the way out is to praise him. Praise is the highway, right? And what you heard in Elizabeth Ann's praise, did you hear it? Is that this has been a season of, of confusion and loss and uncertainty. But God is still good. And so because of that, they can have joy. And not live in despair. Colossians 3 says, Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, 
Set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the world, you will share in all his glory. And so we praise him because it's who we are and it brings us joy. And truthfully, if you are feeling down, one of the best ways to come back up is to count your blessings and praise your God. To remember who he is and what he's done. To think about whatever is good and noble and pure and right. And then joy comes. The next reason that we should praise him is because it helps others to get to know him, right? And so when we talk about the object of our faith, other people understand why we have faith in him, right? Matthew 5, 16 says, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly father. This is why we share praises and testimonies. I can still remember the days when I was very young in the faith and people would share what God had done. Sometimes in miraculous, supernatural, no other way to explain it kind of praises. And you know what it did? It caused my faith to grow. It caused me to understand who God is. That there are times when God acts in ways that we can't possibly understand. And so when we share our praises in front of others, they get to experience that too. Even if they're little praises, even if they're praises about getting through something hard or trusting that God is who he is or just God is good. It's so important for us to praise and share our experiences so that others can see what it looks like for God to be at work. The next reason that we praise him is because it helps us to remember our place. It keeps us in a right relationship with God as we acknowledge that he is above us. That his ways are higher than ours. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We have to acknowledge that we are not our own creators. We were watching a TV show the other day, and, and this spiritual guy on the show says, you see, when we all work together, we become God. No, we don't. No. No, why does that sound spiritual to people? No, God is so much better than we are. He is so much higher than we are. And we cannot possibly understand the mind of God. I'm okay with that. How about you? Because truth be told, my mind's kind of all about me and my little life sometimes. And God is about the universe, right? When we praise him, we show that we respect him and his ways, and we acknowledge our place. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so when we praise God, we acknowledge that he does so much more than we could ever do. And he is good. And then the, the last reason that I think we should praise him today is because he truly is worthy. He is. He is worthy. He is a good God. He is a God who loves you. He is a God who created you. He is a God who has a wonderful plan for your life. He is worthy of our praises. And the more we know God, the more we want to praise him for who he is. Remember what it said in verse 5. Praise him. I guess it's not. It's verse 2. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Oh, Lord, there is no other God like you. We love to make our own gods in this world, don't we? Things that we can't live without, things that, that we give our affections to, things that we think are going to make us happy. These are all not 
good gods, right? These are all things that will disappoint us, but God will never disappoint us. He is a good God. He is mighty in his works, and he has unequaled greatness. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. That's what the saints sang around the throne in, Gen in Revelation. You are worthy, our Lord and God. And so with all of that in mind, it is good for us to come together this morning and praise him. To take the focus off of us. And even when it's hard to share, you know why that is? Because we think about ourselves. But if we can get past that for just a minute and think about God and who he is and remember the things that he's done, then he is glorified because we are here saying, it's not about me, God. It's about you. And you are good. And you are worthy of our praise. We do it in song. We do it with our testimonies. Hebrews 2.12 records Jesus' words. He said, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters, and I will praise you among your assembled people. And so that is what we are here to do today. We've heard praises from several of you already. We know that our praises don't have to be about having all the flowery words. But just a sincere heart that says, I recognize what God has done. And I want to praise him for it. And so this morning, we invite you to share. And I'm going to start with my praise as well. Like I said before, it's really more a matter of which praise. Because first and always, I praise him for my salvation, for giving me new life. But the other thing I want to praise him for is the planting of this church. Six years ago, we opened the doors here. Never could have imagined how many lives we would intersect with over the course of these six years. And not all of those people are here anymore, and some have moved on, and some are far away. Some have passed on. But the cool thing is that our lives have become intertwined as a part of God's church. I didn't set out to lead a church. I especially didn't set out to plant one. But I believe with all my heart that it was God's plan. And that he has done the work here. And I'm so blessed by the relationships that I have with each of you. And with others who stay in touch. I'm thankful for the changes that God has made in me throughout this process. And so for him, for those things and so many more, I praise you, Lord. You are great and worthy to be praised. Who else would share this morning? I'm going to move this. Um, microphone, come on, Lisa. First of all, I just want to thank God for waking me up this morning. Uh, I'm thankful for this church family that Emily and I came to. It will be five years in Easter, I believe. It was 2016. Um, and I'm thankful for the church family, everything that you guys have done for me while I've been here, especially during the passing of my mother and through my sickness. Uh, in the days and the weeks and the months that I didn't think that there was a way, I didn't know how I was going to make it. The Lord always made a way for me, always, and I am thankful for that. I have some new challenges coming my way, but I already know that the Lord is there and he is going to take care of me. So, therefore, I'm thankful, grateful, and blessed. Philip? When I heard that we were going to do this this morning, 
I thought, it's not that I don't have anything to praise God for. It was like, which one am I going to use? Because he has done so much in my life. And sometimes thinking about it, I become overwhelmed. But I want to thank God and praise him this morning for the times that when he answered my prayers, Sometimes it's with one simple word that says wait. And sometimes it's no. But the time he told one of the times he told me to wait, I was looking for a condo. And I had one that I really liked and I was ready to put a bid on it. So I went to prayer. I prayed and he told me to wait. I said, wait for what? But I waited. This was in January of 2010. In May of 2010, that condo flooded. And there would have been no way that I could have had it fixed. So he was watching out for me. And there was another time that... I was turning left on the Mount Juliet Road. The light had, I was sitting in a red light. The light had changed. I started to go. I looked to my left. There was the van who had ran the red light. And he was coming down the hill really fast. And I knew in my heart there was no way he could stop. And I knew there was no way I could go any faster to get out of his way. But somehow, and I knew that it, it was the question of, okay, which door is he going to hit, the front door or the back door? Because I knew there was no way we could avoid it. But somehow, my car swerved, sped up and swerved, he swerved, and he missed me. So that is God again watching out for me and I praise him I just want to thank God for this church and the relationship that I've developed in the time that I've been here uh, before that I didn't really have much of a relationship but now I have a, a real relationship uh, and uh, before, you know, the, everything was kind of about me, but uh, thank goodness it's not all about me, it's about God. And I really want to thank God for my beautiful and wonderful wife and the uh, wonderful relationship that I have with her. And so uh, God has blessed me uh, beyond measure. And thank you. have the honor and blessing of reading Maggie's praise, which is, I praise God for my mom. She is one of a kind and my best friend. So, <laughs> upon reflection um, this morning, I think one of the greatest blessings that uh, God has given us is to lead us here to this church. We had been looking for a long time for a church, and if I cry, I apologize, but uh, could never find one where we felt loved and accepted. And from the very first day, we just felt right here, and we thank you. And the teaching is awesome. I mean, so it's like a, yeah, well, maybe not. <laughs> it takes a nosedive every now and then. But no, it's a rock-solid teaching and such a warm, loving congregation. We, we couldn't be more blessed. So, yeah. I think we should have talked before because that was mine. <laughs> they stole it. <laughs> um, I'm just very grateful that we were, that I was given a chance here, to be honest. It's a job. I hadn't worked in a long time, and they took a chance on me. 
And more than that, we found a home here. We been embraced and just feel like we actually have a church family again. <laughs> no, actually, you know, 20, 24 and a half years ago, I moved to Tennessee. But you know what? I had to, I needed a job, so I don't know. I think it was God, but I didn't find that out until I'd been out here six years. Okay? But I come from Colorado, went down and got a job over the phone. And when I come out here, got a good paying job. This might be a testimony and a praise. But, and I actually surrendered my life. In 2000, February of 2000, to the Lord. And I've been thanking God for all these years, and I've been doing a lot of things. And don't need to put my past in there because it ain't about that. But the thing is, I am very thankful that I got connected to God. It took me a long time, but that's good. But, uh, you know, and I just praise the Lord and thank him for bringing me out here to Tennessee. And I think he's the one that put me out here. Because I have, I'm from a stubborn state and, and uh, a stubborn person in the past, but I ain't anymore. And so i just very thankful that the Lord come into my heart and give me the things. And I, I know quite a few, of the, a few of these people for a long time. And when I got connected to, well, I, there's a lot of people I got connected to when I was in Tennessee here 20, 24 and a half years ago, hard to know. But I'm getting, I'm getting older now. That's all right, though. But, you know, and I'm just very thankful that, you know, dear, I may not be too good at talking, but uh, I don't like writing things down. So I just talk. If I talk too much, tell me to shut up. But that's fine. You did a great job. And so thank you very much. i got to read it because she wanted us to be brief, and I could go on and on. Again, praise God for my Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for me and rose again and gave me the salvation that I can enjoy and knowing where I'm headed. And everybody else's testimony has made me cry, so um, I apologize. I praise the Lord for this day and for everything that he's done for me, for the husband that he blessed me with. For my children and my grandchildren, for the family. And also, I praise God for this church family because you know we can all be who God created us to be together. And we are that family that God created us to be, each as individuals as well as as a family. And I know that we'll continue to do that. And I just enjoy coming here and praising Him with my family each and every day. Sunday, Wednesday, and whenever we get together. And I know that we'll continue doing it um, today and tomorrow and for generations to come. I praise God for giving me the strength and motivation to get my black belt. Bryce, don't go away because I wanted to show everybody and um, want you to know that we now have a new security plan in place, and that is our very own black belt. So come get that. We really are so very proud of you, and we can see God at work in your life too. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> My, my mother she sick and over there I, we had God people around for with me that year over there about four months before my mother died 
I, I don't God, I say we will be okay with that. But one day he's gonna see my mother and go to home to heaven. But we praised your time with your mom, didn't he? Yeah. And that was a true answer to prayer, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Thank you for sharing me. Okay, Danny makes me cry. <laughs> anyone else that'd like to share? <laughs> Can you summarize it for us? <laughs> Can I bring the mic to you, Tyson? Yeah. If, if y'all haven't met Tyson yet, he's new to our church. We're so happy to have you here. Well, thank you. Uh, let me... You want to turn around? God's been with me my whole life, really. So, but I guess I'll tell you about the first time I realized that he was with me. Um, I went to, well, first I went to high school, and I was just a C student because I was a dumb jock. And then, <laughs> then after high school, I had a stroke. and But I went to college, and for somehow I made... I made honor roll, and then my college was paid for, all paid for, my undergraduate. And then I told my mom, I said, I don't want to go to grad school, but she said, I'll go to grad school. So I worked, I got a job, and somehow that job was out of college. And then they said, a lot of people came up to me and said, you would make a lot more if you go to graduate school. So I said, okay. So uh, I went to graduate school. And right when I got to graduate school, I got a graduate assistantship that paid for everything. <laughs> and so my undergrad was paid for, my graduate school was paid for. And then and in graduate school, you have to make A or B or you're, you're just falling out. So, but somehow I got a job, I worked all day, and then <laughs> I like I trained for triathlons and stuff. And all of a sudden, I wrote this book while I was in graduate school, and God has been with me my whole life, really. And I don't want to go into detail anymore, but I just want to say that He. He was with me doing triathlons and doing bodybuilding, and now I'm certain that he's still with me while I'm at this church. The reason why I came to this church, it has to be God for some reason. And I think, I think Pastor Kathy and I are getting ready to figure that out. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Tyson. Anyone else want to share? Here comes Violet. Yeah. <laughs> As, you know, you can look at your life, and like Lisa was talking about, I've been to this, I've been to this, I've been to this, but, you know, y'all were here and whatever. And uh, he just showed me a picture <laughs> that I put on my cell phone recently, and it's just a little wallpaper thing. It has like a, here's the, the sand, and here's the water, and the waves are just come washing in. He said, whose shores are you on right now? And I thought, these? <laughs> so he washed me on this shore. You know, we're out there kind of wallowing around, you know, trying to, you know, get your feet on the ground and going in the right direction, and he just washes you right on up into a shore that, I mean, people that love like a hurricane. You know, they don't let go, and they'll gather together, and they'll walk behind you, and they'll hold you together. Whatever it has to be done, they're there. And um, it's just kind of amazing because we're not uh, able to stand on our own. It, it does take a village. You know, they say to raise a child, it also takes a village to raise a, a Christ-like child. 
And she doesn't mind stepping on your toes either. I mean, she'll tell you if you're in disobedience or she'll give you a sermon. You walk like, oh, my toes are hurting, you know, because she really lays it on you good. <laughs> okay. But he gave us her that was willing to give us what we need and not allow us to continue when if this is his plumb line and we're out of it, he, she brings us back to our shore. So I praise him for um, his guidance that he got us here, but for his guidance that he gave us, her and her husband, and all the others. I mean, you watch her and Susan together, and, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and they, like, intermingle. Like, you know, Susan's a right arm, and she's right under her, and, you know, they just keep running because she says, okay, she'll take care of that, or this will take care of that, and then Jen's in there making the numbers work. And they're an amazing team. There's a lot of teamwork here. So thank you, everybody, and thank you, my pastor and your hubby, and thank you, Daddy God. <laughs> I praise God because there was this one time I was running a red light in my friend's red van. Um, uh, I praise God for healing because my dad was able to drive here today and in pants, no less. All right. Anybody else want to share? I think we're done. We're going to ask the band to come up and lead us in another worship song. And uh, if you think of something that you want to share, write it down and bring it to me, and I'll share it when they're done. Or maybe you just want to stand up and praise him or lift your hands and praise him this morning. He is a good God, isn't he? And, uh, and I hope that you feel, that, feel his presence today as we glorified him with our praises. So let's stand and join our band in worship. Yeah. 
He really is so good. I have one more praise I want to share with you from Sandra. And uh, I love this praise. I want to praise God for listening to me as I ramble on about my marriage finances and most of all with the loss of my mom. I know I sound like a fool, but I feel his comfort. And uh, You know, that reminds me of, the, of what Hagar said in the desert, that he is a God who hears, and certainly that is worth praising him for. Yeah, yeah, what a day. Did you check the buckets to see if there was any more? Nathan, is there anything in that bucket there? Nope, I think we're good. All right, that's awesome. I, I really hope that we take these praises with us this week and that we're more mindful that you were created to praise him. And that he is worthy of your praise. And uh, may we share those with the people we encounter this week. So just a few announcements before we go. Um, one is to, rem to remind you of our prayer times on Monday mornings. And if you have any requests that you want to, uh, for us to lift up for you, please leave those with us, either on a connection card or on our website. And we'll be happy to pray for you there. Also, our um, Bible Basics class. It's continue on Wednesday nights. This week we're going to be talking about the book of Acts. If you agreed to um, tell a story for me, I have little slips that have your assignment on there so you can see me before you go today. Because um, there's a lot of stuff that happens in Acts, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, lots of stuff. Um, all right, I think we can skip over the Wilson County Prayer Walk there. Picnic in the park, thank you. Um, on Sunday, October 4th, that's next Sunday. Hey, next Sunday is October. Can y'all believe that now, right? And we're having a picnic in the park, which I'm kind of excited about because it's been a long time since we had a picnic together. And also because it's not going to be as hot because usually we do those during the summer and we're all out there going, this is really fun, you know. But 
Anyway, so I hope you guys will plan on joining us. We'll get there about noon, and it's in the big picnic pavilion that's by the playground. Um, this is not so much an outreach. A lot of times we do that to reach out to others, but because of this, um, things in our world today, it'll probably more just be us having family time, which is, which is cool, right? And uh, so I hope that you'll come and, uh, and join us for the picnic on the 4th. So um, I guess that's about it for, for now. I'm still exhausted from the weekend. We had um, a big success at the Fairview Missions Market, and thank you to all of you who volunteered and helped with that. And um, uh, we had over, I think, 1000 I think we had about $1,100 in sales in two days between the store and, the, yeah. So that was a really big time for us. And then the prayer walk, I understand, was an amazing blessing. So thank you for those who attended that as well. God is doing good things. And, okay, and also we've been collecting pasta for the schools. And I had one of our supporters contact me this morning and say, however short you were on your goal, um, I'll provide the rest. So, um, so that means we have at least 125 cans of pasta going to our middle schoolers this week. So that's a cool thing, too. Yeah. It's been a good week, hasn't it? I'm mostly thankful I survived. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Um, just a reminder that you can you know, drop your tithes and offerings in the buckets as you go by. Or um, if you need to leave a connection card with any notes or prayer requests, you can put those there too. So let me pray over you before we go. Father God, we, um, we have brought you our praises in our hearts this morning. And, Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing. And, Lord, even as I heard those who were thankful for this church, as I am, I just kept thinking over and over again how this is your work and your plan and how you mean for us to love and support one another and you make it possible because of your spirit that's here, God. And, Father, I do pray that you would help us to walk out of here with the spirit of warriors who are armed with your praises to show the world what you are like, what your love looks like, Jesus, what your power looks like, Holy Spirit, what your goodness looks like, God. From the beginning of time, you've had a plan for us. May we recognize our role in that and step into who you've created us to be this week and for everlasting. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you for my friends and family here and for loving us so deeply. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. All right. Everybody have a great week.